Hi, I'm Bruce Cladney, the Executive Director for the Kansas Association of Counties, and welcome to this KAC Moment. Joining me today is... Hi, my name is Shelby Ostrom, and I'm the Assistant Director for the Kansas Association of Local Health Departments. Also known as CALD, right? Also known as CALD, yes. Now, CALD shares a space here with us at the KAC. And so tell me, Shelby, what exactly is your role with CALD and yeah, what are you doing? Yeah, absolutely. So I am the assistant director, which pretty much means that I assist our executive director with everything and anything. So we are an association um, for all of the health departments in Kansas. There's over 100 health departments in the state. Um, and we assist them with um, resources, um, vaccination resources in particular, um, association resources and events and more. Very good. And so now you're uh, charged with a certain mission now, aren't I am. you? Tell me a yes. little more about what you're yeah. working on. Um, so I was specifically brought on um, as a part of a grant with the Kansas Department of Health and Environment to improve vaccination rates in Kansas, particularly educating um, health departments on the importance of vaccination. So it's definitely been a very interesting transition during the COVID-19 pandemic, but I think the importance of all vaccinations is very important for health departments to understand. Sure. So tell me again, what exactly, who does called serve? Who are the folks yeah. that they particularly serve? Yeah, um, so CALD specifically serves health departments, mm -hmm. um, but we also kind of empower the health departments to serve the communities, um, particularly the counties um, that they work in. Um, so there's over 100 health departments in Kansas, um, and some of those have been combined. Um, so I think there's 105 counties in mm -hmm. Kansas, there's correct? So counties, yes. um, there's a few health departments that have been combined, but they all serve the 105 counties. Very good. So let's talk a little bit more about the importance of local health departments. Yeah. Absolutely. And why should people listen to their recommendations? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so most health departments have a nurse on staff or a doctor. I know for some of the bigger health departments, there's typically a medical doctor on staff. Mm -hmm. um, so typically these health departments are trained specifically to understand health problems and health problems of their community. Um, and they're trusted messengers, of course. So you mm -hmm. have this idea and, you know, a lot of people have this idea in their head that health departments are out to get them and that's completely not the case. Um, particularly because health departments are required to complete trainings every year mm -hmm. to keep their um, registrations and keep all of their licenses. And so there's a huge importance of building trust in communities, right. particularly with health departments. And so it's really important that our commissioners work with the local Absolutely. health department. And yeah. it some, so what are, what are some things or what are some ways that commissioners can prevent diseases from spreading rapidly across their communities. And, and I'm assuming it would probably mean working with the health absolutely. department and bringing them in, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think there's this idea that has spread heavily during the pandemic that health departments can't be trusted. And that's simply not the case. I think commissioners have a really important role to play in this mm -hmm. and other elected officials as well of building trust in communities that have a high rate of disease is super mm -hmm. important. And you have this, you know, you have messages that are coming out that are accurate and concrete um, and I think building trust in communities particularly with commissioners is very important because people voted for commissioners and they mm -hmm. kind of understand what commissioners stand for and so I think they have a very or commissioners in particular have a very unique position to support health departments and support public health. That's true and so quite frankly I mean commissioners kind of set a standard for the community I Absolutely. would say and people yeah. look to the commissioners to help them make choices and decisions and and so what are some so what are some ways that commissioners can encourage their communities to get vaccinated and 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 you know to be healthy yeah absolutely forward. i think promoting really important messaging um that's trustworthy and accurate is very important for these communities you know you have a lot of people who don't necessarily have access to medical care or access to food or certain things like that mm -hmm. and so by providing that accurate information we can be continue to build trust in public health mm -hmm. but as well as build trust in the government um, particularly elected officials because I think that there is a disconnect between you know commissioners the public mm -hmm. and public health kind of is sitting there in the middle and so I think commissioners can really build trust in their communities by providing that accurate information and vaccinations I mean those there's a lot of vaccines out there that yeah, absolutely have stood the test of time absolutely and, and really you know or do good stuff a lot, yeah, of, a lot of good things come out of being vaccinated a lot of diseases have been mm -hmm basically kept unchecked across our, our, our globe absolutely actually, because of the vaccines 
Yeah, and vaccines are a very cost-effective way to prevent disease and health outcomes. Um, you know, the Healthy People Report of 2020, um, mm-hmm. which is published yearly by the CDC, says that in 2020 alone, even despite the pandemic, over 14 million cases of vaccine-preventable diseases like polio, uh-huh. measles, um, rubella, um, mumps, those types of things were prevented because of vaccines. Um, And we also see a huge decrease in, you know, preventative things that happen because people are being vaccinated as children. Um, And, you know, obviously there's still a huge importance for getting your flu vaccination every year. Um, And so kind of promoting vaccination throughout Mm -hmm. one's life is also very important, but we have seen a direct correlation between vaccination and health outcomes for people all across the globe. I can imagine because I know uh, there's more vaccines today than there was when I was absolutely. a kid. Absolutely, yeah. So I looked yeah. back on my life and I thought, okay, well, I had mumps. I had yeah, some of these things absolutely. that they now have vaccines for that prevent our kids from getting them absolutely. moving forward. Yeah. So and I've been in kind of the process of, um, so I was vaccinated against chickenpox. Oh, huh. Um, but I was actually only vaccinated against the first strand of chickenpox. And so a lot of my friends actually ended up, when I was younger, ended up getting chickenpox because they realized through that, through research, that you need a booster for oh, chicken pox. Uh-huh. And so I think it's very interesting that a lot of us, a lot of people are able to see that change. And I also think that that kind of creates this idea that vaccinations don't work. Mm-hmm. However, I think it's really important to see that there's research being put into it, you know, and even that Healthy People report, over 14 million cases have been prevented in 2020 alone, meaning that vaccinations are effective and they're mm-hmm. safe. Um, and I think that there has just been this very impactful idea that you know things aren't as safe as they used to be and that's simply not the case Mm -hmm. so what are some uh outlets or where where can people find out more about vaccines and and educate themselves absolutely yeah Yeah. absolutely so vaccines are available at all of the local health departments in kansas um so definitely encourage you to go to your local health department and learn a little bit more about what they provide um you can also go to www.cdc.gov backslash vaccines um, and they provide all the information that you would ever need about every single Mm -hmm. vaccine that is fda approved Mm -hmm. um and so a quick note about fda approval so um the majority Majority of the COVID vaccines are under emergency use authorization, except for Pfizer. Pfizer has had full FDA approval. Um, so typically, a full FDA approval for a vaccination takes over five to ten years. And so, very thankful that Pfizer was able to get through their system very quickly. Um, but typically, they will go through many different trials um, with. Um, human participants um, mm-hmm. to get to that point. So most if not all vaccines have been FDA approved. So what can commissioners, elected officials be doing to raise an awareness of of vaccines and and what can they be doing with their local health departments? Absolutely. I think the importance of, you know, that relationship between local health departments and commissioners Mm -hmm. is very impactful. Um, And it makes a really big impact on local people, um, particularly people in communities where trust needs to be built. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I think supporting your local health department is one of the best things that you can do in supporting their messaging, um, as well as providing your own trusted messaging as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I know at the beginning of the pandemic, a lot of health departments would give briefings and different things to commissioners. And I think that's a really great way to listen to what the health departments have to say, um, particularly because there's a lot of trust issues Mm -hmm. with the community as well. So I think um, encouraging health departments to speak up and listening to what they have to say is very important. Having done some facilitation work in the past and community development work in the past, you use that word trust and that is Mm -hmm. huge. Trust is so hard to gain and so easily lost. And so in situations like this, when you keep using the word trust, that's key to success. Absolutely. is, Is making sure that the public is aware of what's going on and the decisions are uh, made in public and in the public's trust is so important when it comes absolutely, to absolutely absolutely any vaccination program doesn't it yeah mm-hmm. yeah so so are there some things that we could be doing uh, commissioners and health departments be doing to build a better relationship i know yeah. we talked about building trust what else are yeah there some other absolutely i uh, you know i think um you know continuing to work together yeah 
is a huge thing that you know we've mentioned before um but also relying on each other um i think there is this idea that they're separate entities but but in reality they're together um they're doing the same work they're impacting the same people and so i think there's a really good opportunity for communities to come together Mm -hmm. and fight a virus yeah, or any disease for Correct. that matter. Correct, yeah, any exactly, disease. any disease, um, particularly because we've seen huge outbreaks of measles um, right. because people are not being vaccinated with the MMR. Um, and we're going to continue to see a lot of diseases reappear if people don't get vaccinated. Oh, okay, so where can people get vaccinated? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So all of your health departments in the 105 counties are able to vaccinate against many different diseases. Mm -hmm. um, And the majority of the time they are going to be free. Obviously COVID-19 in particular is free for all United States citizens and United States residents. Um, But most vaccines are free and available at your health departments, but some might um, have a small cost associated with them, but usually it's very minimal. Wonderful. Well, any other final thoughts, uh, Shelby, before we say goodbye to everyone? Yeah, yeah. No, thank you so much for having me today, Bruce. I appreciate it. Wonderful. Well, that's uh, Shelby Ostrom, and I'm uh, Bruce Cladney with the Kansas Association of Counties. And thank you for joining us for this KAC Moment.